Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7. So uh, at the end of the last episode we saw that it's not necessarily guaranteed that from any given room you can get to any other room in the map. So our task in this video is going to be ensuring the sort of complete connectivity between the rooms. So let us go into the map generator script and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom to get to the room class and uh, what we're going to want to do is to be able to define one room as being the main room which all of the other rooms must be able to access either directly or through other rooms. So uh, I think it makes the most sense to define the main room as the room with the largest size. So uh, we want to be able to sort our rooms, our list of rooms, by size. So a list has got a sort method, and the way that sort method works is it looks for the interface i comparable, which we're going to implement here, and it's of type room. And when we use the i comparable interface, we need to implement a method which returns an integer called compare to. And uh, this takes in a room, which we can call the other room. And what we want to do is we want to compare the other room's room size to our own room size. So we can say return other room dot room size dot compare to, since integers have their own uh, compare to method. Um, and we want to compare it to our own room size. All right, so now if we just go up to, um, to the process map method, before we call connect closest rooms, let's say surviving rooms dot sort, and uh, let's do a quick test. Let's say for each room R in surviving rooms, and let's just print R dot room size. And if we've done everything correctly, when we run this, the room size should be in descending order, and it is 900, 412, 352, 308, and so forth, ending at 50. So um, our rooms are being sorted correctly now. So let's go back down to the room class, and let's create a public bool. We can call it is accessible from main room. And let's also create another public bool to say whether or not this is, in fact, the main room. And uh, if we go back to the process map method, I'm doing a lot of back and forth today, um, we can delete this for each. That was, of course, just for testing. Um, now, since it's sorted from largest to smallest, we can get the first one, which will be the largest, and say, is main room equals true. And since it is the main room, of course, we want to also set is accessible from main room equal to true. All right, once again, back down to our room class. And uh, let us create a, uh, a public void set accessible from main room. So when we connect two rooms, um, if one of them is accessible from the main room, then we want to set the other one uh, equal, of course, to accessible from main room, as well as all of that room's connected rooms. So we start by saying, if it's not already accessible from the main room, then we want to set is accessible from main room equal to true. And then we want to go through each of the rooms, which we can go connected room, in the connected rooms list, and we want to set them in turn to be accessible from the main room. All right, so in the connect rooms method, what we'll do is we'll say, if room A is accessible from the main room, then we'll call room B dot set accessible from main room. Otherwise, if room B is accessible from the main room, then we'll call room A dot set accessible from main room. So in this way, it should update the accessibility of all the connected rooms when two rooms are connected. All right, so going up 
to our connect closest rooms method, uh, we're going to make a few changes. The first being an added parameter, a boo force accessibility from main room. And by default, this will be equal to false. And what we're going to do is after we've run this method, um, it will say, if not force accessibility from main room, then it's going to call the method again. Um, so we'll call connect closest rooms, and we'll pass in all of the rooms. And this time, it will force the accessibility from main room. So what that means is that any rooms that are still not connected to the main room will uh, be forced to find a connection. So at the top over here, we're going to create two lists of rooms. So list room, the first is going to be called room list A, this is equal to a, a new list of rooms. And the second is going to be called room list B, and this is also equal to a new list of rooms. So um, if we are forcing the accessibility from main room, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little for each loop through all of the rooms. So for each room, room in all rooms, then uh, if the room is accessible from the main room, then we're going to add it to room list B. So room list B dot add room. Otherwise, room list A will get that room. So essentially, we'll be trying to connect all the rooms in list A, which aren't accessible from the main room, to any of the rooms in list B, all of which are accessible from the main room. Now, um, if we're not forcing the accessibility from main room, then uh, we want it to be as it is currently, where um, we're going through all of the rooms in both of the loops. And so we'll just say room list A is equal to all rooms and room list B is also equal to all rooms. And in our for each loop, we'll change all rooms to room list A and room list B. All right, so let's continue to make some changes. Um, the first one is that if we are not forcing accessibility, so we'll say if not force accessibility, only then will we set possible connection found equal to false, meaning that we've found a connection and we're now ready to find the next one. Now the reason that we're doing this only when we're not forcing accessibility from the main room is very important to understand and is also a little bit confusing, so I've drawn some diagrams. All right, so in the first case where force accessibility from main room is equal to false, um, we're going through each of the rooms. We start with room A, and uh, we look at the distance to room B, to room C, and to room D, and we find that the closest connection is to room B, so we make that connection. Then we move on to room B, and we see that it's already connected to room A, so we go ahead to room C, and uh, we compare the distance to room A, to room B, to room D, and we find that its closest connection is to room D, so we make that connection. And finally, of course, we go to room D and we see that's already got a connection, so we say we're finished. Now here we can see the problem, which we observed in that uh, not all the rooms are connected. So we do the next iteration with force accessibility from main room equal to true. Now if we were to do basically the same thing that we did in the previous iteration and start with room A and compare its distance to all the other rooms which are accessible from the main room, we'd compare the distance from A to C and from A to D and we'd find that the connection from A to C is the best one, and so we'd connect it, and then we'd be done. Everything's connected. But the problem, of course, is that it would be better to connect room B to room C and have A connected to C through B. So what we do instead is we don't create the connection from room A to room C immediately as we would when we're not forcing the accessibility, but we rather look at the other rooms first. So. In this case, the only other room which isn't already connected to the main room is room B. So we look at the distance from B to C and from B to D, and we find that the shortest distance is from B to C. And uh, so now our overall shortest distance is from B to C, so we create that connection instead of the one from A to C. And then having done that, we call the entire method again to uh, see if there are any more connections to create. 
And in this case, everything's connected, so we end the method. Okay, so hopefully it's now completely clear why we are not resetting the possible connection found when we are forcing accessibility from the main room, since then we still are in the process of considering all the other rooms before we actually make the connection. All right, so with all of that in mind, it should also then make sense that uh, this create passage method that we're calling for, um, for each of the room A's, we only want to occur if we are not forcing accessibility from the main room. And uh, we only want to create the passage when we are forcing accessibility from the main room actually outside of both loops so that um, we have considered all of our options first. So over here, we'll, uh, let me actually just copy this. We'll say, if possible connection found and is forcing accessibility from main room, then we create the passage. And then we have to call the entire method again, as I was saying, to uh, look for any more connections that need to be made. So um, we'll, we can just copy this here. Connect closest rooms, all rooms, true. Okay, so there are just a few more quick changes to make before we can try this out. Um, the first thing to consider is this block of code here, where we're saying if room A is connected to room B, then uh, we're going to break and go to the next room A. Now this made sense before, because if room A had a connection, then uh, it didn't need another connection, so we'd just skip ahead to the next room. But now that rooms can have multiple connections, we need to remove that. And what we'll instead say is if we're not forcing accessibility from the main room, then only in that case do we want to skip the room if it's already got a connection. So we can say if room A dot connected rooms dot count is greater than zero, in other words, this room already has a connection, then we can just say continue to skip to the next room. The only thing that remains to be done is over here where we're saying if room A is equal to room B, then obviously we don't need to uh, find a connection between the same room, so we're skipping to the next room. Um, another case where we'd want to skip is if room A is already connected to room B. Okay, cool, so with all of that done, let's go into Unity and press play, and we should now see that all of our rooms are nicely connected up with uh, no region being isolated from another. So, a bit of a shorter episode today, but in the next episode we'll be looking at carving out actual passageways to replace these little green debug lines. Until then, cheers.